council meeting for Thursday the 30th of May 2019 at 9.36am in the Hamilton City Council Chamber. Uh, apologies. There are no apologies. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor James. All those for, any against, carried unanimously. Confirmation of agenda. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Ryan, scratch his eye. Uh, all those for, any against, carried unanimously. Uh, declarations of interest. There are no declarations of interest. Public forum. There is no public forum. Confirmation of extraordinary council open minutes. 9th of April 2019, moved by myself, moved by Dave, Councillor Dave, seconded by myself. Sec All those for, any against, carried unanimously. Item 6, page 9, confirmation of Council open minutes, 18th of April 2019, moved by Dave, seconded by myself. All those for, any against, carried unanimously. Item 7, page 21, confirmation of extraordinary Council open minutes. 29 April 2019, moved by Dave, seconded by myself. All those for, any against, carried unanimously. Confirmation of elected member open briefing notes to April 2019, moved by Dave, seconded by myself. All those for, any against, carried unanimously. That was item 8, page 36. Item 9, page 38, confirmation of elected member open briefing notes. 11 April 2019, moved by Dave, Councillor Dave, seconded by myself. All those for, any against, carried unanimously. Item 10, page 40, confirmation of elected member. Open briefing notes, 30 April 2019, uh, page 40, moved by Dave, seconded by myself. All those for, any against, carried unanimously. Um, welcome back, Deputy Mayor, we missed you. Um, Okay, so we're now going to uh, Chair's report on page 43. Um, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor James. All those for, any against, carried unanimously. Item 12, page 55, Safety and Wellbeing and Performance Update, page 55. We'll take the report as read. Uh, are there any questions? So this report, just um, uh, elected members, this is a report that we bring through to council to ensure that we manage our um, obligations to you as um, governors of council. But the report goes through the Audit and Risk Committee and is vigorously debated and challenged at that stage as well. So um, potentially members of the Audit and Risk Committee can provide some context of any uh, commentary. Um, otherwise, we'll just take questions. Thank you, uh, Chief Executive. Moved by <coughs> Councillor Robb, seconded by Councillor Paula. All those for, any against, carried unanimously. Uh, there's nothing, oh, sorry, there was nothing on the board. Councillor, uh, yes, I'm we'll go back I'm to questions on this one. Conscious I couldn't go no to the last, <coughs> our last session where you do the workshops. Apologise for that. Uh, just want um, assurance, which I think you've given privately, but I think it's important to have public assurance that for the Whoever are elected as council, the new induction, which will be all of new all of council, that we, this will be part of the very critical part of our induction process in terms of um, a real focus on governance. And I absolutely acknowledge the work you guys, the staff, have done to involve all elected members beyond the audit and risk committee membership. Yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Siggy. about that previously on oh, page 64. Um, okay, I don't touch it anymore. Okay, but I have to look. It's under number two, uh, 3.6 side visits in number two. And uh, last time um, when they came up, you, you had problems with the RT system and um, is 
so are you still researching that? That what you're going to do with that? Um, the, t the team are um, close to a solution with that. Um, I don't have the details right now, but I will circulate an email after the meeting and, and give you an update on that topic. Okay, and I had one more question, and I, I'm sorry, this is just a, that new system. I'm trying to work with that. Um, there was, you did a wellness program, work well, um, um, on the, and you did, and I saw that um, voluntary health checks. Uh, how many people did take part in that? Are we, can we have that information, or is it? It would be just interesting to know from, from the amount of um, you know, staff we've got here, how many staff did take part in that? I'll, I'll get that number and I'll circulate that as well. That would be lovely. Thank you so much. Awesome. Any debate? All those for? Any against? Carried unanimously. Page 150, item 14. On page 17. Sorry, apologies. Item 13. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to use a new system here. Item 13, uh, uh, is, the uh, item 13 is the proposed changes to LGNZ rules. Was okay. that the placeholder oh. report, was it? Hand over to... Oh. Okay, uh, um, Ian. Uh, thank you, Mayor Andrew. Uh, th this paper is presented by me purely and simply because uh, I received the report from uh, Local Government New Zealand, but essentially, as the report says, Local Government New Zealand is asking member councils to um, make some decisions on rules that they're proposing, changes to rules, for what are essentially their standing orders, their kind of the national standing orders, I suppose is the simplest way to explain it. Um, and so there's a series of proposals that they will want to put at the Local Government New Zealand conference, and we need you to determine whether you wish to vote for or against um, each of those changes. So if you look at uh, recommend staff recommendation in three, um, we're asking that you either approve or decline um, each of those proposals. Beyond that, um, I won't be much assistance of much assistance to you, but the proposals, proposed changes are set out in the attachments to that report. Okay, so we'll take it as read. We'll take the whole lot as one vote. So, okay, sure, okay. So we'll take them uh, separately. So uh, moved by Dave, seconded myself on uh, 3A, all those four. Uh, sorry, apologies, Councillor Gary. I think there's a question, so I want to speak to on that. Yeah, sorry, I didn't see the questions, Councillor Gary. My question was simply that we could take them, could we take Deputy them Mayor separately? Martin. Deputy Mayor. Just, um, <clears throat> do you have anything to add in terms of the background of Proposal 2? That's to give correctly to give effect to Auckland Council representation on National Council. <clears throat> is that just going to be straightforward or...? or? Uh, to be completely honest, Deputy Mayor, I imagine that the uh, Council's representatives to Zone 2 may well be in a better position to answer any questions around context. I literally am aware of the information in this report and not the background to it. OK, I'll ask, my, I'll ask the Deputy Mayor that question off, offline, actually. Thank you very much. I'll ask him that. Um, I, OK, I just want to... I, I reserve the right to speak to that item. I think it's quite an important item, and I'll explain why when we move to debate. Thank you. Councillor yeah, so Paula, <coughs> do you want to add anything there and go on with your questioning? Uh, no, it was discussed at Zone 2 briefly, but uh, not much. It, it is around the new structure of local government with having um, boards and um, such in place and giving them a bit more power. But I was going to say that just to remember, oh, I'm probably debating now, just to remember that Auckland at the vote at local government conferences get more votes anyhow because it's based on population. You know how we get a number of votes because we represent more people. So they do get a proportional vote at local government conference, is what I'm saying. Councillor Angela. Um, yeah, just checking, are you, I'm assuming you're going, you, the motion you put is approved, because the report says approve or decline, yeah. is approved for all so, of them? Yeah, all of them approved, yeah. yes. Thanks. Okay, so we'll take three, uh, Rob, Councillor Rob. Yeah, just a question, and, and Paula might be able to help me with an answer on this. Um, Oh, no, I've lost my train of thought now. Um, it's around the Auckland representation. Um, prior to Auckland Council being set up, what were, what were the rules in terms of representation on National Council? 
Um, I, I'm not sure whether Paula knows the answer to that, or indeed anyone does, but is this really just giving Auckland um, that, era, that level of representation that they may have previously had when they were a number of councils before the amalgamation? So my understanding through you, Mayor Andrew, is that it's been mayors or their, their alternate. Um, it's been provided for. So that would exclude um, the Auckland um, governing bodies like local boards. So it would just be the mayor of Auckland and or if he can't attend his alternate. So what they're trying to do is to give voice to um, other parts of their democracy in Auckland. Okay. Uh, and Councillor Pascoe on page 77. And an attachment two to this item is the specific deletion and then the substituted wording proposed. Does that help? Okay, so we're taking. Sure. Um, just uh, yeah, look, I, th I think it's all trending the right way. The only thing I had a question about, and I, I imagine nobody can answer this, is um, proposal two going down to the local board level. Uh, are there any other places in New Zealand that have strong local boards that then might want to, might feel that they need to have board representation? I get what they're trying to achieve here. Do you see what I'm saying? Is this going to set a precedent up for any other local community boards to step up and ask for a place on the National Council? There's a difference in uh, local board versus the community board as well. A local board has a different set of powers. So I don't think there's any other council in New Zealand that actually has a local board. I think these councils have community boards. So I need to check that though. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a fair distinction. So because the, um, the lo local board has local delegated board. authority done certain <coughs> and take certain functions, whereas a community board only has a more limited set of um, powers. Yeah. Okay. I might talk to that then. Okay. Local board and say Narawahia. Board. Uh, yeah, community board. Very important board as, as it is, of course. Um, we're aiming for Queenstown first, um, Councillor McPherson. Okay. It's enough banter. Uh, we're going to the votes. Um, we have a mover and a seconder on all of these. Uh, somebody wants to talk. Uh, I thought you were on holiday, Deputy Mayor. Slowly, we're going to have debate. Far away, quick, Deputy far Mayor. away. I just want to caution you that Mayor Redman the had the quickest running, meeting, Mayor. council meeting ever in seven minutes. You don't want to follow his his record for a whole range of reasons. Net less. Oh. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I just want to say with tree A, and, and I mean that with great affection and respect to the, the said Mayor, but um, with regard to the Auckland uh, representation, I fully support that because what does it do is it's acknowledging a different structure and we need to remind ourselves, particularly with regard to their local boards, uh, those boards um, are literally, in many cases, the equivalent of significantly large provincial towns around the country in terms of their function and their, their complexity. Uh, and I would even be going so far as to say that I would expect uh, that proposal to give effect to fair representation to an area that represents at least a third or so of our population to go through without too much debate. If by any chance it was not successful, then I would be anticipating some deep, intense discussions with Auckland, uh, because I think there would be a huge credibility, uh, huge credibility issue with local government New Zealand if this didn't go through. I think this is about fair representation. And from our point of view, particularly with the Auckland Hamilton Corridor study, uh, our interest in having uh, Auckland properly represented in any forum is obviously uh, very important to us. This is just, to me, purely about fairness and recognising that local government uh, has evolved in a very significant way and all LGNZ Constitution is doing is just catching up with that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Paula. Thank you. I'm very pleased to see the first rule in place with Tamaru Ata because um, they generally speaking, are in a position of having to be invited on an issue-by-issue -issue basis, so I think that's um, t entirely appropriate. Happy, I'm um, not going to vote against the Proposal 2 for Auckland Council at this point in time, but I would have 
probably felt that the um, local board member has a very discreet set of functions as opposed to the council by whole, as a whole, um, that they could attend but not necessarily hold voting rights would have been preferable to me because Auckland already, already has a strong voting right of the National Council and a strong voting right at the local government conference by, um, by the percentage of votes that they get that represents their community. Um, but, you know, it's not such a big deal that I would vote against it at this time. I just uh, thought that was an interesting move. Thank you. Okay, so we're on page 70 and item 13. We're voting on staff recommendation 3A, moved by Councillor Dave, seconded by myself. Uh, so on A, we're approving all of these to approve unless somebody puts up an amendment otherwise. So 3A, all those four, any against? Carried unanimously. 3B, all those four, any against? So we... Sure, go ahead. So this is so just... I had taken debate on the whole lot, but go ahead. Oh, so I thought we... I specifically asked if we could separate them. Go ahead. We have voted them. Oh, for sorry, big If sorry, you would like okay. to debate, right. I, I will let you. Okay, debate, thank you, Gary. Look, um, in New Zealand, there are no legislative uh, barriers to Maori representation, so this is just another move towards racial discrimination in our systems of governance. So I'll be speaking against. I'll be voting against it. Since I opened it up to debate, I will strongly debate that the <laughs> local government act clearly says that iwi and Māori should be around our table. Well, it doesn't say it in those words. It says that they should be included in decision-making and the way to have iwi voice and uh, is to be at the table when the decisions are made. And um, so I strongly debate the other way from Councillor Gary, but fully respect his position. Councillor... Uh, Deputy Mayor Martin. Yes, uh, we, we had a... A, a related debate some time ago and I was in a minority uh, you guys were right I was wrong I think the model that the council ultimately adopted has, has been excellent and I've been exceptionally impressed with the calibre and contribution of our Manga Māori representatives obviously uh, we also should remind ourselves that the Parliament of New Zealand is far more diverse than the structure of local government uh, in New Zealand in terms of who actually sits around the table so this is just but one uh, acknowledgement, not just about diversity, but because of that that important uh, relationship. And I do think that uh, that representation to National Council will be a very constructive and very significant contribution. A three B, all those four. Any against? The motion is carried. Councillor Mallet dissenting. 3C, all those four, any against? Carried unanimously. 3D, all those four, any against? Carried unanimously. 3E, all those four, any against? Carried unanimously. We now move to item 14 on page 150, recommendation from the Growth and Infrastructure Committee meeting, 7th of May 2019, um, uh, hang on, slow up. Um, so, um, Councillor Dave, is there anything you would like to add to that paper? Uh, you're the chair. Uh, so it's item 14, page 150. Yep. You're the chair of that committee. That's no. Off. Okay. So, um, would you like to move, Councillor Dave? Page 150. Councillor Dave, are you page good to move that as a chair? Okay, moved by Councillor Dave, seconded by Councillor Jeff, who you're the deputy of that. Committee, all those for, any against, carried unanimously. But, but um, I did offer to move that a while ago, just been kind of completely glossed over, just for the record. Yeah, I'm not just offended, being, but it just, just you know, being very take. clear, the reason I took Dave is because he's the chair of that committee, and that's why I gave him the voice, and I took the person who's the deputy on that committee. I understand that, but in the, in, the, in the interest of good chairing, you might want to just acknowledge that before you do that uh, for members. Sure, yeah. Councillor Mark. Thanks. That's the normal procedure, but I noticed that you want to acknowledge that you were keen to... Yeah, my word. Uh, Councillor Angela, did you want to add something? No. 
Item 15, page 151, Recommendations for the Community Services and Environment Committee of the 14th of May 2019. I'll, I'll take the um, mover as um, Councillor Paula is the chair of that committee and seconded by Councillor Ryan, who's the seconder. Um, and uh, Paul, uh, Councillor Paula, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, no, I'm just trying to find the right page, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, here we go. No, I think that's um, that's fine. Just we did have a very good talk about the need for an arts and culture strategy, which I think council uh, accepted into, bought into. So that's really good. Happy to take questions. All those for, any against? Carried unanimously. Recommendation from the Audit and Risk Committee of the 16th of May 2019, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Pascoe. All those for. Any against? Carried unanimously. Recommendation from the Finance Committee, 23 May 2019. I'm taking the mover uh, as Councillor Gary and seconded by Councillor Pascoe. All those, uh, anything you'd like to add, Councillor Gary? I know, just a um, very sensible uh, change to our delegations. All those for? Any against? Carried unanimously. Resolution to exclude the public. Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor. All those for, any against, carried unanimously. Okay, we will stop now. Just to, if anyone wants to grab a cup of tea, um, we'll be back at ten. We'll, we'll be back at. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be back in three minutes at ten o'clock. Three minutes.